Food Grabs. Really excited to have our friends from FGF Brands with us today, uh, Jason and Saeed. Um, I have some questions, but I think first of all, it would be awesome if we could go one at a time and um, you just sort of talk us through your career progression, how you started, how you decided to choose a career in the food and beverage industry. If that was a choice, lots of people pivot and end up in the industry. So really curious to hear your own stories. And um, I guess, Saeed, you're, you're in, in, ahead in, on my screen. So maybe you want to go first? Sure, no problem. Okay. I, I, as you said, my name is Saeed. Uh, I am Director of Quality and Food Safety and Customer Care for FGF Canada. I have bachelor in animal science and obviously my major was related to the kind of food. So all my career, I've been involved in food manufacturing for almost almost 30 years in three different continents. Uh, I have master in Greenbelt. Uh, I'm the first PRC professional across the globe. Uh, I've done any sort of food safety and quality training related to, you know, food industry like HASA, BRC, SQF. Uh, as I said, this is my path. When I started studying at university, I, I knew that I'm going to be in food industry. And that was it. So I've, I've been in food and I will be in food till my, you know, end of my career. And you came to um fgf how did that happen like when when you started off um you know you're actually your I, I came to canada around 16 years ago uh fgf is my second job uh, the first job that i had the business was going down so i thought that okay i have to start looking for a job then uh, i was a little bit more picky because it was my second job in canada so i had you know the, the opportunity to look for what I really want to do. And I found FGF is a very fast growing company. So I came to FGF. My first job was a QA supervisor at one of our facilities, 1225. Then throughout the last 11 years, I've been promoted to different positions from QA supervisor, I became food safety and audit manager. This is a LinkedIn title. We don't use manager title at FGF. Then after that, uh, I, I promoted to QA program lead, which is equivalent to QA manager, QA corporate manager. And after that, uh, I got the director position. And what did you do in order to secure so many promotions? I mean, how do you think you conducted yourself um, and what advice would you give to students and grads to, that, that are interested in, you know, perhaps coming in at the entry level um, in a QA, perhaps a QA technician role uh, or QC um, technician? How would you advise them to progress like you have? And actually, as we all know, you know, the whole food industry is changing every day. The requirements is changing People are more cautious about what they are eating. Uh, everything about science is improving. There are lots of lots of new practices. You have to keep yourself updated constantly in order to grow. And I think FGF was one of the best place for me to accomplish that, you know, that goal because they provide you with all resources. Uh, FGF is really, really, really good. As I said, I've been in food manufacturing for last. 30 years and uh, in three different continents. So I can, with confidence, I can say it's very rare any any manufacturing provide that much training and that much support to its team member to grow. So when I came to FGF, I had this opportunity. I've been through, I would say at least 15 uh, relevant to food safety and quality training. In, and in order to be successful in my role and grow and you know be better i needed all those training which was provided by fgf hmm. so i guess if you as long as you're as long as you're asking for it you're you you, you sort of communicate that that's your goal uh, to move up in the company um you're saying that you know that those opportunities were there for you yes of course and 
you know, at FGF, there's always opportunity. You don't, you don't see anyone who wants to grow and cannot grow at FGF. The company is a very, very fast growing company and they, they love you to be aggressive. They, they, they love you to, to learn more and they, they, they love people who put lots of effort to, to grow and they provide you with all the resources, which as I said, this was the best you know, place for me to work on and stay. And also, Saeed, if I could jump in as yeah. well, so even even in addition to Saeed growing, Saeed, can, can you talk about other people in the quality team that started as, a, you know, let's say a QA tech and have, have moved up? Essentially, almost all of our program leaders are individuals who started as QA techs and who became the team leader, who became the manager. Are there some examples, Saeed, you want to share? Of course, we have, you know, we have lots of, lots. actually, all my team members, they started as a QA tag. I can use names, Manpreet, Nihal, Neil. They started as a QA tag, then they become QA lead and the QA program lead or food safety and audit manager. And uh, we promote homegrown talent. And there is a specific program, which, you know, is for homegrown talent. I think even Apex team has the same same thing. They they provide with all the resources for people who wants to grow, and there are different programs, unleash your potential, homegrown talent program. Uh, they give you the opportunity uh, to get where you want if you want to grow. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go over to your colleague now, Jason. Can you do the same and kind of give us an overview of uh, your background and experience and how you came to be at FGF? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Jason Brown, and I lead the operational excellence team, specifically the manufacturing subgroup of the OPEX team. Um, I started at FGF nine years ago. Uh, I basically have spent my whole career here. So I, I studied mechanical engineering and management at McMaster University, graduated in 2013. And FGF was my first job coming out of school. Um, and as we were discussing before the uh, before this interview started, I didn't really know I was going to end up in the, the food industry. I had no idea. I was studying mechanical engineering. Um, you know, I was calculating stress and strain on beams, you know, when a load is being applied. And I didn't really know exactly where I was going to end up. Um, and then it just so happened that I basically had gone through a sort of an interview process with a consulting company that did a lot of consulting in food industry and they did a lot of continuous improvement and that got me really excited about it and they are the ones who actually connected me with mgf saying hey there's this company that's looking to hire some great you know young grads at the time mgf only had two facilities um are you interested i said absolutely um, and that's where i connected uh with some of the leadership team here at fgf and started as a continuous improvement engineer um and at the time, yeah, we had two facilities and the types of projects that I was working on were, was all about improving efficiencies of the manufacturing lines, right? Looking to reduce waste, reducing downtime, reducing non-value added labor and utilizing that labor in more value added positions. And it was a wonderful experience. And then after a couple of years, um, you know, it was excellent timing as well. FGF with great leadership and a great vision and great products was the, the company was growing, was taking market share from other, um, other organizations. And so as the company was growing, we were building the continuous improvement team. And that was a wonderful opportunity for me to have, a, to have a chance to sort of mentor some of the new and train some of the new CIs that were hiring. And that eventually just naturally progressed into me taking on a team leader role in the CI team, and then moving into a manager role in the CI team. And now the CI team has basically joined forces with a few other continuous improvement teams, and we're now the operational excellence team. And I lead the manufacturing uh, subgroup within that team. And the OPEX team also has a maintenance and reliability subgroup, and it also has a quality and sanitation. Um, and yeah, it's been an absolutely amazing journey these last nine years. Um, have an opportunity to work with tons of amazing people, like Syed. And the great thing about operational excellence or CI, right, continuous improvement, a lot of people use those names interchangeably, is you have the ability to work with individuals across the organization. So you're very closely working with the production teams to, because we are a manufacturing company and that's something to be really proud of. Um, and so obviously a big focus needs to be improving our manufacturing processes. And to do that, you work with individuals from maintenance, from quality, from production, from supply chain. Um, and that's been an uh, absolutely uh, amazing journey. 
Mm. Uh, um, so what does your day look like? It's interesting because I do talk to a lot of students and grads and when they're just starting out, they, you know, you, they hear job titles, but they, they really want to understand, like, what do you do? You wake up in the morning, you, you take a shower, you get dressed, you go to work, maybe you go to a home office, maybe you, you are going to the, the facility. Um, but what do you, what's your day look like? Maybe Jason, you could go yep. first and then say, we go sure. to you. So I'll give two examples. I'll say a continuous, what does a day look like for a continuous improvement engineer? Because that's the majority of our team. We've got 21 team members right now. And a lot, like essentially the, the, the model is one to two continuous improvement engineers at every single facility. Okay. And in the FGF network, that means seven facilities right now, but with the Western foods acquisition, obviously it's, it's growing, uh, you know, it's growing even more. Um, but a day generally looks like for a continuous improvement engineer is that you are based at a manufacturing plant and you're, let's say you, you, you know, you have a little desk and that's in the production office because you're very closely working with the production team. And that's where the, the quality team for that plant sits. That's where your maintenance team at that plant sits, right? So you are part of that, that team. Um, and what a day would look like in an FGF world for a continuous improvement engineer is there's a mixture of sort of some daily routine activities, as well as looking at longer term projects. So an example of a daily routine activity would be, hey, there are some reports that we send out that takes a, a few minutes every day, and that helps provide visibility on yesterday's performance. So what was our output like for yesterday? Okay, how many pieces per hour did we hit on average, or how many pants per minute did we hit? And let's say we hit you know, a, a certain number, that, that led to an efficiency of, of 82%. So then you're, you're also collecting data from different resources to say, hey, where was that opportunity, that 18% of lost opportunity, what contributed to those losses? That could be either downtime, it could be that we weren't running at the optimal speeds, it could be that uh, waste was contributing to it, um, and or rework as well. And so part of the routine is, you know, communicating performance metrics and KPIs about the, the, the previous day, and that helps provide visibility to the leadership team. Then um, the team would also be working on, let's say, longer term projects, which are driven from the data. So as an example, one manufacturing line is performing worse than the others. It has a higher waste than the other lines on average. That's going to be the area we're going to focus. And we are going to help to quantify, you know, with the support of maybe the, uh, the finance team to say, hey, what is the financial impact if we were able to reduce the waste on this line down from 4.5% down to 2%, which is, you know, meeting our company uh, target. And we say, oh, wow, that's a significant, you know, financial impact. We're going to prioritize this as a project. And then the, the OPEX engineer or CI engineer works as a team, works with a team uh, made up of production team members, of maintenance, of quality, you know, um, to basically tackle that issue. And we at FGF like to follow uh, Lean Six Sigma, you know, methodology. So following like lean manufacturing principles or Six Sigma principles, some of you may have heard of the DMAIC approach, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Um, and that's basically a problem solving methodology to help uh, eliminate whatever problem you're trying to solve. So that's basically my, my long answer for what a, a day in the life of, a, of, a, of an OPEX engineer looks like. They're spending a lot of time on the floor. That's where you're getting the majority of your learning. You are, you're not going to learn from sitting at your computer on Excel all day. Yes, there's a portion of your day, you know, maybe let's say 10%, 15% of your day, you might need to do some Excel analysis and whatnot. And, that, and that's great. It's very valuable. But the majority of your learning is going to happen on the manufacturing floor where the action is really happening. That's where you're going to build relationships with individuals on the production lines who actually understand who are working on the machines every day because they are your best allies. They know what's going on. They have amazing ideas and solutions, and your job as a as an OPEX engineer is to help facilitate um, the you know the brainstorming sessions, is to help break down barriers, is to help connect the dots, so get feedback from the team and make it happen. Um, so that's basically kind of like a, a day in the life of an OPEX engineer, and then a day in the life of let's say a team leader. So if you're if you're supporting and leading a team, or if you're you know a director and you're supporting you know multiple teams, um, your your day sh transitions a little bit. You're, you're less so, you're not quite as hands-on in terms of like, okay, we're working, you know, with the team to problem solve, but what you're doing instead is you're doing more training, you're doing more mentoring. Um, and to be the, to, to, to really add the most value as a leader, in my opinion, is that you need to have gone through the various steps, 
right? So that you know, ah, like I've, I've lived through that experience and I know, guess what? If you try to implement a solution and you don't get the team members buy-in before you do that, you're going to run into trouble down the line because the improvement that you're trying to make isn't sustainable. So as a, as a leader, you're really trying to, to mentor your team, to guide them, to train them. Um, and of course, you're involved in other elements such as interviewing um, team members, and that gives you a really, um, you know, well-rounded um, experience. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And Saeed, what about your role? Sort of how would you describe it to someone that knows nothing about, you know, quality, uh, sorry, food safety and quality? And, and they say, what do you do when you when you get to work each morning? Actually, for quality and food safety is a little bit probably is com more complicated because uh, to make to make the uh, long story short, R&D makes a product based on customer need or based on what we think it, it meet the customer requirements, then they hand it out to operation. Then after hand it out to operation, QA is to make sure that everything that we are making is meeting exactly customer requirement. A, uh, compliance part, which is related to, you know, government regulation, FDA, CFIA, or any country of cell. And also, we have to make sure that the, all the food safety aspect of the, the product has been met. So uh, we kind of mosey to, to go to every single department when it comes, I think when, when it comes to the QA, it's the only department who knows exactly what the other departments are doing. And sometimes even they develop the SOP for them, they make sure that they are following what they are supposed to from A to Z. Anything that comes to the operation part, has to be passed through QA and food safety. Anything you name it. If you want to buy even, I don't know, a scraper, if you want to buy a pill, if you want to buy a bean, it has to be, for example, uh, food contact approved. When it comes to the raw material, it meets all the government or regulatory requirements, or if it's compliance with you know customer requirements. That's one part of the job. Then the other part of the job is taking care of customers need after the product is out if there is any customer concern or customer complaint so the actual job of the qa it's very so uh, you you can go you can go to sanitation from qa you can go to even apex team you can go to you know maintenance team you can go to operation team and tell them okay this is not what we are doing this is what you have to do you have to follow this process step or if you are not following this process step you have to you know correct them so uh, to answer your question about day-to-day -day activity as i said there are different layers from qa tech qa lead qa program lead which each of them give a specific guideline to the lawyer lawyer uh, lawyer layers for example when it comes to the qa lead qa lead supports six qa technicians at the facility, which each of them are responsible to check the lines uh, for two lines. So if there is any issue happening in each line, the QA lead is to make sure that the product is safe to be out, sent out. Or if there is any support for making a decision in, in some certain layer, that person makes the decision. Or if it not, comes to the second layer, which is QA program lead, and so on comes from it. For me, Basically, my job is mentoring the team and giving them the technical support as, as well as leadership support. So making sure that the team are doing what they're supposed to do. If there is any ambiguity about any regulation, I give them, I give them uh, proper guidelines. And uh, when it comes to you know any, any risk assessment, I walk them through uh, any potential risk for any any issue that is happening and, and so on. Okay, so what's the best part, Saeed, while you're while you're there? What's what's the most enjoyable best part of your job? Would you say the best part is my well, every day is different, so you never get bored. So every every day you face something new and then you deal with you know that that's that's the main interesting part from my point of view. The second the second part is as I said, QA deals with every single department. So the interaction with people, it's to me it's enjoyable. I, I like to you know communicate with people 
when uh, we were going through the COVID, I hated working from home. And I, I, I think I barely work from home because I want to come to work. I like to see people. I like to talk to people. So when it comes to the QA department, you have to be involved with every single activity at the manufacturing site. Whoever is doing anything, you have to know. You have to you, you have to make sure that it's compliance with the regulation. You have to make sure that it's done properly. So the interaction with people, that's another part of, you know, uh, enjoyable uh, part of the job, actually. And Jason, what about you? What's your, like, favorite part of your job, if you were to sort of highlight something? Great question. Um, one thing that I learned and that we've learned, like, at FGF is that each person has different like personality traits, right? We're all like a, a blend of different, you know, personality characteristics, but sometimes we have different like uh, um, powerful traits. So as an example, for me, I'm uh, more of a people person is what I've learned through various like self-assessments. And so one thing, and then reflecting, I'm like, oh, that does make sense. So for me, what I'm really passionate about is, is having, uh, you know, a day where I'm working with other people, like say it mentioned, and really making an impact. So if I'm able to work with an operator on the line um, and, and work with a team member and we're able to make a positive improvement, those are the kind of days that I, I feel amazing and it was like absolutely incredible. And I like, you know, and I like seeing um, uh, the impact of my work as well. So for me, and, and, and that's what's wonderful about being an OPEX, is that you're, you're constantly given opportunities like that, whether it's, you know, small um, projects that are affecting one facility, or if you're looking at more of kind of like a corporate project that, that affects many facilities. Um, I really love working with other people and making an impact. Um, what another thing for me is one of my hobbies. I love tinkering with my hands. I love small engines. So I've, I've refurbished two really old motorcycles from the sixties and seventies. That's one of my hobbies I love to do outside of work. So, um, any time that I'm, you know, interacting with machines as well, and I'm studying, you know, robotics and whatnot, that's that's an area that that just absolutely amazes me. So for me, it's a combination of people and really cool equipment and machines that get me really excited. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cool that you met. You mentioned robotics and automation. I think the um, there's often some misconceptions about the industry in general. Um, you know, just how advanced we, we are now, how it's changed. I think people conjure up pictures of like hair nets and factories and they don't sort of think about um, how the industry has changed over the years. What would you, how would you address that? Like, what would you say are the, the biggest misconceptions about the industry in general? Well, I can't, I mean, FGF is all I've known, so I can't speak for the industry as a whole. Um, but what I can say for sure is that at FGF, um, with the owners that we have, they're thinking long term and they want to invest. And basically, one of the mottos that we go by, and you'll see it on the website, is we're the tech company that bakes, right? So we um, we invest in technology. We partner with with OEMs from all over the world. So as an example, we invest heavily in certain robot packaging robotics from Germany from a company from Germany. We also buy big pieces of food manufacturing equipment from Italy and France as well. So we are trying to leverage the, the, the best equipment in the world, you know, the most automated, to really create the factories of the future is another term that you're gonna hear Tage is one of our owners uh, talk mm -hmm. about. And so, yeah, at FGF, I think, yeah, don't, I, you were absolutely right about hair nets. That's a food safety concern. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Syed will catch you if you, uh, if you try to even step one inch into a plant without a hairnet um, or a beard net, but that's that's always part of manufacturing to have good good manufacturing practices. Um, but in addition to that, it's it's just it's so much more. There's there's equipment, there's processes, it's high speed, um, it's because that's the way of, of of the future. You have to be competitive. You have to create high quality products at an affordable price. So mm -hmm. you can't just be producing you know, one croissant every hour, you know, the customer is not going to pay $75 for one croissant, right? That's, that's not. Um, and so that's kind of the magic that, that that's what we have to be able to do is we have to be able to produce really high quality products with really clean ingredients. Um, because that's, as I had mentioned, that's the future. That's where people, that's what people want to buy. Um, and to make, and you have to make it at an, at a fair price. So to make it at a fair price, that means you have to invest in automation, you have to invest in continuous improvement. You have to always try to um, improve the way you do things. 
because you'll be able to pass those savings on to the customer so that the customer feels like they're getting really good value. Wow, oh my gosh, this whole tub of mini croissants, you know, it's only costing me uh, $3.99. And you know what, I feel really, I'm getting really good value out of this uh, product. So what's new and um, what's changed in the past few years? I know you've had an acquisition, but what's new at FGF? And maybe we can leave the, the three of us just chatting now, um, you know, have a, have a sort of general conversation. Um, you know, what would, if someone was to say to you, what's going on at FGF? New products, new lines, as you mentioned. Um, Jason, you want to go first? Sure, sure. I mean, what's new at MGF? Every everything is new. So let, let me just name off of you and say and jump in, please, if I miss anything. So at FGF, because of the growth, we have a lot of new manufacturing plants going up. So as an example, we have a line right now where two lines were already commissioned. The third line has been commissioned and has been running for a little while, but we're still looking to improve it, you know, to, to keep ramping up and get output up. And the fourth line is under construction and is being commissioned right now at our newest facility. Um, and that's in our newest line. It's our highest speed slice loaf line, most automated line, you know, all different types of equipment. And so as we speak right now, we've got a bunch of different teams from R&D, from the engineering teams, from, from OPEX, from quality, from maintenance, or literally every team is involved uh, in, t in commissioning that line. Um, and then as that plant is being commissioned, we've also got another building that's literally under construction right now. So the foundation is set. You know, the, the framing is happening right now. Um, so there's new plants being built. And, and you did mention it, a big part right now is integrating, you know, two organizations, um, FGF being a young company, acquiring a hundred year old company like Western Foods and really trying to leverage the, and, and share best practices both ways, right? So learn what has been working really well um, at Weston and taking that and spreading that. Uh, those best practices across across FGF and making that, you know, part of the standard and vice versa as well. Hey, what are some some of the things that we've been doing really well at FGF mm. that we're able to uh, to share uh, with with, uh, you know, the, the former Weston plants that are now we're all now one family um, at FGF. And um, yeah, it's 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 a, an exciting journey. I've been here for nine years. Every year has been an exciting uh, year. And say it. I mean, yeah. please jump in. Has ever has, has there ever been a boring year? <laughs> I would like to go back to your previous question. You asked me what I like the most about my job, and I said that, you know, my day-to-day -day is different. So this is exactly FGF. So when you ask uh, what is new at FGF, every day is new. Yeah. So every day we go through some something new. Uh, that's that's why FGF has been successful, because they, they never stop. They uh, The owners always say that we always look at ourselves as a startup company. We don't want to stay somewhere. We don't want to stick something. And we, 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 we think long term. So that's why every day is different from uh, a day before. Jason said it well. We are building a new facilities. We're going through the integration. We are commissioning new lines in our existing uh, facilities. And again, uh, we have a big continuous improvement team, which makes sure that we are not doing same thing every day, right? Mm -hmm. So always it's about the continuous improvement and it's not about just the operation part. Jason talked about uh, OPEX structure. They, they, they are involved in different sections, even sanitation, uh, sanitation team that we have at FGF, I would say by far is in a very, very different class from the other food manufacturing sites. Uh, quality the same, operation is the same. We, we at FGF think long-term and we are an innovative company and also we are a tech company that makes. So everything is new every day. I love that phrase because with, with where I sit um, with food grads and, and careers now sort of are trying to attract young people into the industry, um, you know, we're up against other industries that seem sexier and cooler and, and you know, if people think of food industry, it, it, you know, it certainly does conjure up certain images or they think of food service and don't even consider, you know, the opportunities on the, um, on the food processing side. So um, I guess that you mentioned, um, you mentioned that it, FGF was a startup and you've grown and you, you know, as a startup, you've bought and you're a newer company that's bought an older company. A lot of 
um, conversations that, that I have, that we have revolve around entrepreneur, like young people, are, there's lots of talk about, I want to become an entrepreneur. We actually have a mentorship session coming up tomorrow morning on that. Um, I think that you can have an entrepreneurial spirit and still work for a larger organization. Jason, what would you say to that? At FGF, can you have that entrepreneurial spirit? Or, I mean, some people say, you know, should you work for a small company? Should you work for a large company? A smaller, you'll wear more hats and you could be more entrepreneurial. Larger, you're more structured, more processes and procedures. So what would your answer be to that? Can you be entrepreneurial at FGF? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, I think aligning yourself with the vision of the company is important. So as an example, FGF as a company, no matter what size we are, we are always going to be a startup at heart because that's that's driven right from the ownership, Tejas mm -hmm. and Ojas. Um, that's what they, you know, they started this company from scratch um, with their with their dad's mentorship as well. And that's always been the spirit. So no matter what, FGF um, has that sort of startup mentality. And, and what does that mean? It means that a lot of us wear many different hats and we're pulled into diff many different um, areas. You'll never hear anyone here say, oh, that's not part of my job description. You, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. kind of like mentality. That's not really, that doesn't really exist um, here at FGM. I can't speak for every other company, of course, um, but that's that's something that we really pride ourselves on. So absolutely, like, you know, um, as an individual, you can absolutely want to be an entrepreneur and feel that connection because th that's one of the greatest strengths at FGF is that we all feel the ownership over the company and the products like it's our own babies mm. right so so when we go into the stores uh, my, my literally my wife will like go crazy every time every time we go to the grocery store no matter what i right away go to our products and i start looking and i remind her hey look this was made on muffin line number three you see you see the date code this is made on ml3 every single time and she's like i know jason you told me this a hundred times i get it but i'm like no no you don't understand that was made on muffin line number three so that pride and you know what that's not only me i hear that across many team members from all different departments and all all different areas we're very proud of the products that we make we're very proud of the company that we work for we have some of the highest engagement scores in the entire like industry or i don't even know because we do do official you know third party engagement um, scores very very high engagement mm. and um yeah so there's that pride there's that ownership so we all feel like we are like we are you know we are all running fgf and we're, we're all um part of that that ownership so absolutely you can you can definitely be part of a, a larger organization and still feel that that like pride that it's it's your baby mm -hmm. Sayed, please add anything. Like, how, how do you how do you feel? I think one of the one of the reason is that you know the, the owners are very very hands on. You can't believe how much they are involved with every single part of the business. They go to the floor. They work with people. They know people by names. And when it comes, for example, to QA department, all the shift reports from my QA text, hundred something shift reports, they just read every single of them, and we get response. That, that tells us that, okay, what we are doing is very, very valuable. It's very, very value added to the company. And as Jason said it very, very well, uh, the whole family, our families are connected to FGF. It's not just us which are connected. My family is the same. My, my wife is very, very <laughs> precise about FGF products and, you know, she, she always talks good about FGF products when it comes to, you know, our friends and family and relative. And, you know, this this is our pride. Mm -hmm. yeah. It helps, doesn't it? When you're dealing with food, this is kind of slightly off subject. But my son, he's 16. He works for McDonald's. And after he joined, I thought he'll not eat McDonald's anymore because he'll see what goes on in the background. And, you know, and he'll be like, oh, I could never eat it. But that's not the case. You know, he comes home, he, he, he eats there, he brings food home. He's like, you know, it's, it's very clean. You know, he talks about the quality. And this is a 16-year-old, you know, first job. So I can only imagine that pride, um, you know, in, for, for yourselves in the company. It's, it's great to hear because it gives the consumer that confidence that if you care and you're feeding your families, then, you know, we can have confidence buying the product too. 100%. And even as an example, every time I go into Costco, even though, you know, I could go to the manufacturing plant that makes the, the mini non um, 
and you know and get some free samples and whatnot it doesn't matter every time i'm in costco and i walk by that section i'm grabbing a pack of stonefire mini non because you know i'm gonna pay full retail price for it because it's that good my freezer is full of it and i just you know we can't get enough so mm -hmm. absolutely we're very proud of the products that we make and that's the reason the company is successful is that you have to you have to make good products if you're not making good products someone may buy it once and then they're going to go with a different option later on. And, and you know what I mean? And your, your company is not going to be very successful. So it starts with the products and, and the people and the culture. And, and then that's, you know, you keep going from there. And it's true. Sometimes so. my relatives even, they go to Costco or different stores and take pictures from the product. They are asking, they send me a picture. Is it your monthly? This is what you guys <laughs> make. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's exactly that. And I think you have competition from products, but, you know, to go back to the people piece, um, you know, same with companies, if you're not treated well, if you're not excited to go to work every day, and there's, I mean, who's kidding who? Every day, you're not kind of, woohoo, excitement. That, that's unrealistic. You know, I think we all have moments, days, there's challenges um, that, you know, in, in every job, in, in every industry. Um, but I think if it's like, the majority of the time you're having fun, the majority of the time you're, you know, invested, then then you're in the right role. Um, and that leads me to, to another question. I think you kind of touched on it, in, on it, Jason, but if you're um, an intern or a co-op student or um, somebody that's entered, uh, entered into the organization, sort of an entry level role, what kind of projects would you be involved in potentially that, you know, certainly uh, let's talk about interns and co-ops. Sure. Um, so as a, so on the OPEX team, we hire um, many co-op students, um, all from um, normally like engineering programs. So whether they're studying, you know, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, industrial, we've had some electrical. So really there's, you know, there's not any specific uh, requirements. Um, and we've, we started our co-op program hiring co-op students probably about four or five years ago. So we've had lots of uh, groups of co-ops. And let me tell you, like, we're, we're almost never disappointed. The the individuals are coming in with amazing ideas. They're super, you know, tech savvy. Their Excel skills are amazing. Um, and they're really passionate and really energetic. And so we love it. And so we literally have, in addition to those one or two full-time continuous improvement engineers or OPEX engineers that we mentioned, we also hire one co-op. So, it, it, you know, they're basically called a continuous improvement engineering co-op or OPEX engineer co-op. And we have one at each facility. So they basically are able to learn from the, the, you know, the full time who have maybe, you know, between one and three years experience or one to five years experience. Uh, so they're learning from them that, and they're also working on very valuable projects. So they themselves will help support on some of that, um, uh, you know, as an example, doing some sort of performance reports for the manufacturing plants. They're also assisting and working on projects, doing data capture, doing data analysis, making improvements. Uh, well, one of the things we're very proud of is that our co-ops are not like treated like co-ops, like, oh, you're just a co-op. Let me just like hand you a bit of work to keep you busy for the next mm -hmm. four months or eight months. No, that's no, no, because there's such a demand for, for work and tasks and commissioning and action. We need every resource that we can get. So right away, after about two weeks, everyone forgets that that individual is even a co-op. They're treating them as if they're a full-time team member. There's, which means that there's responsibilities. You know, there's expectations, there's responsibilities. They're being challenged, and the feedback that we get from the co-ops is always amazing because they're like, "Wow, I've grown a lot. I've matured a lot here. You guys are actually trusting. You know, you're trusting me with the analysis I'm doing. You're counting on me. I'm adding value, and they really, really value it. We've had many co-ops come back and extend their terms. Very common." And we've even had uh, like we have two full-time engineers right now who started as a co-op mm -hmm. so they started as a co-op they worked for eight months at, at different facilities and then we really liked them they, you know they really liked the organization and the timing worked out that you know we had openings at that time and we you know we connected right away and said we want you back and, and they want to be back and so they started full-time and now they're um, doing really really well yeah saeed in the qa department same same sort of thing you hire co-ops and Exactly, same thing is happening at the QA department. So usually each term we have four to five QA. Uh, one of them goes to customer care team, the other four goes to the facilities and we treat them exactly the same as QA technicians. So uh, they go through the similar training that we 
uh, we do for the new hires two to four weeks depends on you know how fast learner they are mm-hmm. uh, exactly same thing as jason said actually i have four qa technicians right now which has started as a co-op last year if i'm not mistaken 18 months ago and they went back to school they finished their school they came back and one of them recently actually was promoted to the QA specialist. So from QA tech, she, she was QA co-op, then she went back to school, she finished her school, came back, hired as a QA tech. Six months later, she applied for QA specialist, and she's a QA specialist, and she's helping us for US facilities integration as we speak. So she's doing a fantastic job. And uh, to be honest with you, every single of my QA co-op that, you know, we have had for last two years, if they come back, they are more than welcome to, you know, we constantly have new hire and every single of them did a fantastic job for us and there is room, you know, for them to be hired at FGF and grow. Mm-hmm. It's always interesting to me, to, to me that companies don't take advantage of the subsidies that are available to um, employers to hire co-op students. We're the same with our organization. We do hire a lot. And to your point, Jason, that you made, um, well, you both made, they're not just in a role where, you know, here's some filing or here, you know, just go in and do this and keep busy. They are an integral part of our team. And we forget that they, they you know, um, that they are full time and we treat them that way. And then you have to remind yourself that, you know, maybe they're not so invested because they are a co op. But then they shock you because they truly are invested and they're like, you know, feeling accountable and um, ownership over the projects that they're working on. So and and they bring so many amazing ideas, like you said, and and, and new ways of doing things and um, perspectives um, and the digital savvy, you know, and and, that that kind of thing is uncomparable. So um, I love that you that you do that. Um, I guess the question I had as you were as you were speaking, and Jason, you, if you want to go first, when you've taken those co-ops and their term comes to an end and there is that full-time opportunity, what did the ones that you got, you, you hired full-time, what did they do differently? Like, what can they do to stand out? So what did those people do that you were like, we got to hire this person? Um, and just in general, what can young people, students, uh, new grads do to really stand out? Yeah, great question. So essentially, you know, the qualities we look for in whether it's a a co-op or, you know, during an interview process, if you're looking to hire people, is that you want to make sure that they're the right cultural fit, right? So that their their personality will work well with FGF, that they're going to enjoy working at FGF, a very fast paced, you know, a lot of change, they're going to enjoy it. And, and, And that they're adding good value. So at FGF, one of the mottos is speed, change and uncertainty. Right? There's a lot of things changing. Obviously, you can probably understand just as we're describing the projects and the action, the change. There's a lot of change. It's not just a steady, everything's the same and it's been the same for the last 20 years. And no, 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 there's a lot of change. So, so we look for people who are the right cultural fit that have that energy as well, that drive. Um, so very specifically, you want people who are driven, who are able to make an impact and who, you know what I mean, like are, are not afraid to get out there, meet new people, pick up the phone, make a phone call, right? And I know it's 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 tough today. Everyone's so used to like, you know, intimidated to like, you know, pick up the phone and call people because everything's changing. But again, we want people who are energetic, who are driven, who um, build good relationships with people. For sure, if, if, if you're there and you have a big ego and you think you're, you think you're all that, you're going to run people, you're going to run people the wrong way and they're not going to want to work with you. And that, that, you know, that's not going to make you very successful. You could be the smartest person in the world, but if you're not able to work with other people, then you, you, you're not going to be successful. Mm-hmm. So really, we, we want people who are who are obviously, you know, technically strong. You know what I mean? Like you have to do a good job. You're humble. Uh, you're able to build relationships with people and you're and you're driven. Yeah. Saeed, what would you add to that? Like, I guess we're talking soft skills here, you know, what they... Jason said it well. So when it comes to FGF, FGF has its own culture. So the very, very first element for us is if that that particular individual is is a good fit for FGF culture, then it comes to the technical knowledge and also when it comes to the QA department, there are some specific personality, personal requirements, for example, because... 
we deal with different cross-functional team. You have to be able to build that relationship. Uh, then attention to detail. This is the, one of the biggest elements when it comes to qualification of the QA team members. And as Jason said, and um, said it many times, the culture you have you have to melt with FGF culture. You have to be able to you know work with people because FGF is about family. FGF is about teamwork. It's not about the individual. It's not about me or you. It's a, the whole team. So. Mm-hmm. I like what um, it, it, you're right. It's, it's fit, and I think you know. Read the room. Um, you know, lots of new grads come out with these this idea of what it's like to work in, in a professional environment, and um, maybe they're comfortable on video, or the, you know, we do a lot of this now, the virtual, the Teams calls. But there's still that element of um, professionalism that's required. You know, we we have a camera policy. If you're working from home, you're still on camera. If there's a meeting and that that kind of thing, so. Um, yeah, little things that uh, people can be aware of. Um, what skills in terms of, um, and I know this will be different depending on the department, so um, maybe Jason, you, you, you want to go first. What would you recommend if, if someone has like a generic um, degree and um, they, they're interested in, in working for FGF or working in the food industry, what technical skills what additional skill development would you encourage them to do would you would you would you you know recommend they look at so that they do jump off the page to you perhaps you've got a pile of resumes what what, sure. what would you like to see yeah sure so i mean if someone is interested specifically in continuous improvement or opex um one not like easy credential that they can do but something that definitely stands out is um get some sort of lean or six sigma or lean six sigma certification you know there's a lot of different organizations companies universities you know what i mean that you can do these courses in um and so i would recommend if you're interested go and get your lean six sigma green belt okay if you're if you're really passionate if you're in a maybe if you're in school and the school offers it you know you can work towards getting your black belt as well um try not to do you know don't just do a lean six sigma green belt course where you don't do a project um, because, you know, it's not a regulated body. So, you know, we do try to look into individuals that have, you know, learned the tech, you know, learned some content and then mm-hmm. they've also applied it in a project. So that'll be something that'll really stand out on a resume. Um, other, I mean, definitely Excel skills are, are always needed. I heard someone, um, uh, someone from the IT department once joked that, you know, even after a nuclear war, hopefully it never happens. There are two things that are going to survive cockroaches and Microsoft Excel, because <laughs> Excel is just so, um, you know, even, even if companies are trying to avoid people using Excel and, and, you know, because they want to go through certain systems, Excel is always, you know, it's, the go-to. Yeah. it's always, it's a go-to, it's, it's very, very uh, important. So, I mean, and, and for us, we're doing a lot of, you know, we do analysis, we do studies and those Excel skills are really handy. So learning formulas in Excel's, I mean, just, just go be specific, you know, you got, you got to know your, your V lookups, you got to know how to do pivot tables, you got to know how to do your basic, uh, you know, like sub if equations and, you know, basically your basic kind of formulas. If you want to be more advanced and learn macros, that's going to be um, an added benefit as well for you. Um, but that's, that's specific to continuous improvement. Obviously, different departments have different skills. You know, if you're like, if you want to be more on the IT side, I think learning Python programming is, is pretty, is pretty pretty popular and pretty common, um, as well as your other like, you know, programming languages, but I'm definitely not an expert at that. Mm, That's great advice. Um, I appreciate it. Saeed, what would you add there in terms of So for QA, uh, when it comes to the computer skills, so nowadays everybody works with computer, and as Jason said, Excel is really necessary for every job almost. Uh, and when it comes to QA, we, we, we work with different software. You don't have to be a computer savvy, but you have to be good with computer, especially we use different, you know, uh, software. So you have to be good with computer. Uh, besides that, uh, basically any food safety and quality related course, specifically HACCP, PCQI, it's, it's a good bonus. So you get a very good understanding of, you know, uh, the requirement, the concept, uh, the concept of the quality and food safety department. You learn a lot if you go through the 
HACCP and PCQI training. In addition, there, there are different training, risk assessment, uh, NEGFSI training like BRC, uh, SQF. That, that would help a lot. But as I said, the, the fundamental is you, you be good with computer. Also, you know, the basic of food safety and quality uh, practices like HACCP and PCQI. And Saeed, what skills or personal attributes um, would you say are, are sort of essential for you to be successful in your job? Being a good team player, uh, attention to detail, and as Jason said, especially when it comes to FGF, you have to be humble. So you have to work with very, very different department, and every department has its own priority, so you have to be able to work with you know everyone. So sanitation has its own priorities. Apex team has its own priorities. Maintenance has its own priorities. So if if you want to go and ask for anything, you have to be able to be humble and you know you ask in a in a nice way. And you you, you should be able to work with with the team. So that that's one of the probably must element for QA departments because as I said, you, you deal with different departments. All almost every single department. Mm -hmm. Jason, same question for you. Personal attributes and, and skills to, that make you good at your job. Yeah, I think we kind of we kind of touched on it earlier. Like, I mean, those attributes that I was describing that we look for in in a, a, the co-op role, in the OPEX engineering role, or even if you're a, a manager, a director, or a VP, I think all of those skills um, apply, right? So, so being a good communicator, um, that's something that's also a skill that like, I think we want to make sure that, that, uh, people keep working, right. Is, is the, like the art of, you know, like, like writing a nice, concise email. That's something that we've actually invested in training at FGF to help, you know, like retrain individuals because there's so many emails, there's so much information flowing mm -hmm. that if you are like, in order to communicate your message clearly and concisely, it takes a bit of effort. You have to be aware of what you're, of what you're writing. Um, so yeah. Communication skills is really important. Being, you know, technically, uh, being technically strong, that willingness to learn, that interest, that desire to improve, those are some of the qualities that really stand out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, if you could do it all over again, Jason, <laughs> would you choose the same path for yourself? Hundred, hundred percent. So, hundred yeah. percent. It's it's been nine years at FGF. Um, people ask me, oh my gosh, that's a long time at, you know, the first company out of school, like, don't you want to explore other companies or whatever? And I was like, why would I want to explore other companies? I'm being challenged every day. There's growth opportunities. There's change. There's things happening. It's it's one of the fastest growing organizations in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm very, if I was doing the same job every day, absolutely, you get tired of it. I think we're all like part of all of our personalities is that we want, you know, we want to try new things. We want to learn. Um, but that's one of the best things about FGF is that I felt I've been challenged. I've been put into training programs. I've had professional coaching as well and mentorship um, and Syed as well. Right. So there's unleashing your potential. Like he mentioned, all of our team leaders go through different levels of coaching and mentorship and, um, and it helps us grow and mature. And it's this coaching and mentoring, has even helped with, you know, my life outside of work as well. You know, understanding about my personality, understanding about others' personalities. So as an example, your your spouse potentially at home, understanding different personalities and how they work together. Mm -hmm. um, I, I found it really beneficial. So um, absolutely, I, I would redo it in an instant. Saeed, same question for you. Would you change anything? Or if not, like, if you wouldn't change anything, um, sorry, carry on. I think, I'm going to let you answer. For, I've got other questions, though, and I'm looking at the time, but I'm going to let you answer. <laughs> so uh, for people who know me, I think they don't need to ask this question for me because FGF is a perfect match with my personality. This SP change on uncertainty, this is my personal life too. But I like this craziness. I like, you know, to be keep going and my day-to-day -day activity would be different because I am a very, very active person. In my personal life, I'm a very active person too. <laughs> We've been in Canada for 15, 16 years, and I, I changed my houses six, seven times. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can tell that 
the company culture matches with my personal, you know, preferences. So I love it. I, I don't want to sit somewhere. I just want to change, change my, you know, not career path, my day to day. I like to be different from the day before. I like to study and I, I like to learn more. They provide me with all those resources and not, not, nothing else. Definitely. I, I haven't been looking. I, I'm not going to be looking for a job. I'll stay at FGF till my end of my career because I love it. And would you say you have balance? Because I know that thing, the lines get muddied when people work from home, especially after COVID, that everybody started working from home or lots of people that weren't out um, in the food industry <laughs> because of, of people in the food industry still had to go to work um, by and large. But um, that comes up a lot in questions, you know, in, in small groups with um, students and grads, you know, do, do you have that balance, would you call it, well, like work-life balance? So again, if you're asking me, I think it's a, a little bit wrong question for me because I go for vacation. Actually, I just came from vacation yesterday. I was in Greece for two weeks, but when I was in Greece, I was in touch with my team. So <laughs> I, I don't, I don't feel that my team is my work team. This is my family. Sometimes they say that you know, why you keep you know texting us? We are fine. We are fine. I said okay. When I go for vacation, I call my son. <laughs> How he is doing. You guys are the same. You guys are my kid. So, as I said, that that FGF and work at FGF is a part of my personal life. So I think that's that's a wrong question for me. I don't know about Jason. <laughs> I love it. I don't. I don't think I'm working. I think this is my life. And um, doesn't matter where I am, what time it is. You know, I love to be involved. That's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, to, so specific, I know there's yeah, a lot of interest about this kind of like work from home, work in the office, hybrid models and everything. So I think just like many companies, FGF is, is trying to figure out where do we land. So obviously pandemic hits, any role that can work remotely was, was moved to remote right away. So as an example, those in IT, boom, okay, no problem. You're set up with your computer at home, you're working remotely, you know, it's a piece of cake, easy. In manufacturing and those support teams that are supporting manufacturing, you need to be on site. And remember, food manufacturing during a pandemic is a, a critical business, right? Like, like literally when the shelves are running empty and there's no more bread on the shelves, you know, we are the ones Panic. producing more bread, yeah. trying to fill the shelves, right? With making naan and making muffins and making croissants and making all kinds of other delicious baked goods. Um, so our manufacturing never stopped during the pandemic. And in the continuous improvement team, because we're supporting manufacturing, we are also supporting um, uh, supporting on the floor manufacturing. So now as time goes on to see where it ends up landing in terms of, hey, different, I think it'll end up being certain teams will have different hybrid models. Some teams are going to be fully in the office every day. Other teams work, you know what, if your preference is to work remote four out of five days and one day a week you're coming into the office, I think that's going to be fine as well. That might be more on the IT side in manufacturing. It's more, you know, in the plant. And there's going to be many other teams that are maybe going to be some sort of hybrid in the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, we are approaching three o'clock, but I wanted to end um, by giving you each the same question. Saeed, maybe you want to go first. What's the best piece of career advice you were ever given from a mentor, from a family, friend, and anything? Best piece of advice? Uh, for food manufacturing, I think, I mean, nobody, nobody regrets coming to food manufacturing because this is the safest industry across the world. So if you work in food manufacturing, you're always safe. You, you always have job and, you know, uh, you shouldn't be afraid of losing your job no matter what. And when it comes to FGF, this is fast growing company we always have hiring and for whoever wants to grow and learn i i can tell this is the best company mm -hmm. perfect and jason with lots of lots of you know uh information and support mm -hmm. to go to you know they, they promote we talk about it i think a couple of times that you know unleashing your potential and this is there are lots of lots of good program for people who wants to grow grow professionally that's awesome last yeah, word to you jason yeah yeah just words of advice i mean i think um 
uh, focus on the soft skills. I think um, although the world is becoming so technologically advanced and you know what I mean, it's it's teams and all everything, we are still human at the end of the day and we still crave those social interactions. Um, and so I think my advice would be to keep always, you know, stay focused on those soft skills, right? So communication skills, making eye contact, um, being comfortable, you know, in an interview, um, being comfortable presenting, right? Those oral skills, because even though things keep changing and evolving, those old, you know, those old school skills are still very, very relevant and they're still um, super, super important. So don't, don't forget about the soft skills. Keep focusing on them. Uh, they will always, uh, and building relationships with people, right? Mm -hmm. That will mm -hmm. never get, they'll never go out of fashion. It'll never go out of style. <laughs> exactly. That's Thank amazing you. advice. It's a, uh... So true. As a recruiter, I 100% agree with, with what you both have, have said. And um, we're at the hour. This has been awesome. I so appreciate your time. And um, we couldn't inspire and mentor the next generation of food and beverage industry professionals without people like yourself joining us on these types of sessions. So we, we really appreciate it. You really don't understand the industry unless you hear from people inside of the industry. And, and this is what we're, we're trying to, to bring to the forefront. So um, Thank you for your time. And uh, you'll see this shared on all different um, channels, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, and uh, please feel free to share with your own networks. And uh, yeah, again, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much. Have thank a great day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.